Good evening, welcome to the Herndon Town Council Public Hearing, March 28th, 2017. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will go ahead and call the meeting to order and ask you to join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> uh, Councilmember Olam is not here this evening. She lost her brother Brian um, last weekend after a brief illness, so she's out of town with her family and won't be here this evening. And our thoughts and prayers are with Sheila and her mother Gracie, who many of you know, uh, and their family during this difficult time. It was Sheila's youngest brother, so it's it's pretty sad time for the for the Milstead family. Um, we do. Oh, before we get started, I, I wanted to um, acknowledge Bill Ashton, who's here for the first public hearing in his role as our acting town manager. So welcome, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, um, we have a couple sets of minutes up for approval. Uh, first, is there a motion to approve the March 14th public hearing minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? I'm going to abstain because I was not here. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Mr. McKenna. Um, is there a motion to approve the March 21st work session minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. I think I have to abstain from part of it. You can vote. You can actually vote on the minutes even if you were not present at a meeting. So you're in the clear. Oh. Correct? Okay. Like, wait, wait, let me ask the attorney. Okay. That is correct. That is correct. Yay, I was right about something. Okay. Um, discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we have several presentations this evening. First is a proclamation to recognize Local Government Education Week, April 1st through April 7th. And I'll recognize Councilmember McKenna to read the pro proclamation. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, the Town of Herndon uh, Proclamation recognizes Local Government Education Week, April 1st through April 7th, 2017. <laughs> On February 29, 2012, the Virginia General Assembly uh, designated the first week of April as Local Government Education Week throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. This week was selected because April 2, 1908, the Council Manager Forum of Government was created in the city of Staunton, Virginia. During Local, educa during government, lo local government Education Week, municipalities throughout the Commonwealth are recognized for valuable services provided to the residents and communities they serve. Therefore, the mayor and town council, the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim the week of April 1st through April 7th, 2017 as Local Government Education Week in the town of Herndon. Express appreciation to the town staff for vital role they play in educating our community through initiatives such as Youth and Citizen Policy Academies, National Night Out, participation in local school activities, providing internship opportunities to students, promoting career opportunities at the town level, uh, town safety, building, and home maintenance workshops, enforcement of state and lo uh, local laws, and community meetings on matters of importance to our citizens. Further, the mayor and town council of the town of Hearn hereby express gratitude to the town staff for their dedication to our residents, recognize that citizen services, including law enforcement, public health, and safety, recreation, and education of local children are best delivered at the local level and encourage increased civic education and engagement to strengthen our sense of community throughout Herndon, both during local government education week and throughout the year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, our discussion um, on the proclamation, anyone? I, I just wanna say um, I've been on local government in two different places, both in home rule and um, in a Dillon rule state. And I can say that what's happening at the state level there's been a lot of um, taking back of the power from the t uh, from townships and cities, and some of those things are very important because the services we provide to local citizens, uh, not only as far as council, but the uh, township um, employees themselves, the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis can be cut. So um, I encourage you to um, reach out to local uh, state, your state legislators and let them know uh, how you feel about places like Herndon because they're very unique. So um, it's, this is a very dear thing to me. So thank you. Thank you. Other comments from council? Well, I know that we are biased because we sit on a local govern government board, but I, I am always telling everyone to get involved locally because you really can make a difference and you can actually find your elected officials, you know, at the grocery store. So um, we 
we appreciate those of you that, that participate and come out and um, hope that you'll encourage your friends and neighbors to come and take more of an active role and um, appreciate what Mr. McKenna said about um, about reaching out to your state legislatures to make sure they don't leave local governments behind. Um, I would uh, like to ask uh, our town manager if you have any comments. To well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I do. Um, <clears throat> as we consider government education, oftentimes we think of our civics classes back in the day, and they were focused on the federal government and how we came to be. And maybe if you were in Virginia, you were lucky enough to hear about state government because, well, a lot of, a lot of history happened here in the Commonwealth. But very f infrequently are our kids taught about local government and yet it is the part of government that touches lives every day. From the police officer on the streets to the folks over in Parks and Rec, DPW uh, planning and zoning, we touch lives every day, yet people don't take time to realize that. And so this is a valuable tool to help educate and I encourage everybody to participate and help us get, make ourselves better in serving you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Okay. Well, I would like to um, invite down uh, the entire council, uh, our town manager, town attorney, and um, any staff that's present um, at the meeting, we'd invite you to come down for the presentation. Excuse me. Next, uh, we have a proclamation to recognize Vietnam Veterans Day, March 29th, 2017. I'll recognize Vice Mayor Baker to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A Town of Herndon proclamation recognizing Vietnam Veterans Day, March 29th, 2017. The Vietnam War began on January 12th, 1962 with Operation Chopper near Saigon and the last American troops left Vietnam on March 29th, 1973. Through more than a decade of difficult con conflict, the dedication and service of our men and women in uniform stood true. These brave patriots faced the line of fire, cast themselves into harm's way to save a friend, and fought hour after hour, day after di day, to preserve the liberties we hold dear. The Vietnam War is a story of service members from different backgrounds, colors, and creeds from all across the country who came together to compete to complete a daunting mission and to serve the country they loved. During this conflict, more than 58,000 brave soldiers laid down their lives in service to our nation. 11 years of combat left an imprint on a generation. Thousands of soldiers returned home bearing, a, bearing battle wounds. However, still more were burdened by the invisible wounds of post-traumatic stress, Agent Orange, and memories that would never fade. 
Yet in one of the war's most profound tragedies, many of these men and women came home to be shunned or neglected, to face treatment unbefitting their courage and a welcome unworthy of their example. This must never happen again. Therefore, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim March 29, 2017 as Vietnam Veterans Day in the town of Herndon. Pay tribute to the fallen, the missing, the wounded, the millions who served, and those who anxiously awaited their return. And reaffirm one of our most fundamental obligations to show all who have worn the uniform of the United States the respect and dignity they deserve. Be it further resolved that the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby call on all citizens to observe Vietnam Veterans Day with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities, and to honor our nation's courageous veterans. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, comments from council? Sure. Vice Mayor. So I'm going to say it's, it's a pleasure to read this tonight, although I'm missing my fellow council member, Dave Kirby and Commander Kirby, um, who typically has read this and is a, a Vietnam vet himself. So um, I just want to mention um, our, our dear colleague who's, who's not here tonight, and I think he just had minor surgery, but, um, but I know he always spoke with, with um, such reverence and credibility given his service and what, how he witnessed this. This was... Um, it's hard for me to imagine the the way we treated our vets when they came home from a war like this, just knowing h how I feel like we've, we're doing a much better, better job now of that as a nation. Um, and I, I do think that part really rings true. Let, let us never forget and let us never treat our vets that way again. Um, I know my, my dad served in the Air Force between the Korean and the Vietnam War, so he was lucky to have that window where he wasn't actually during wartime, but still served and still proudly wears his uh, veteran's hat. So it's with, with him and Commander Kirby and um, Harlan Reese and others in the audience who have served. So I just want to thank you, and I'm really honored that uh, I got to read this tonight. Thank you. Other comments from Council? Mr. McKenna. Um, I'm very glad that this is happening, too. Uh, I come from a town where a lot of um, people have served in um, wars. Um, the greatest generation, obviously, World War II and um, Korea, the Forgotten War, and Vietnam is the forgotten soldier up until recently. Um, I've had several friends who have had to bury their fathers at a younger age because of Agent Orange and cancer when I was a child. Um, I didn't quite understand it then, um, and I recently lost two friends from natural causes, so, you know, they're unfortunately, they're starting to pass away as well. Um, so I... I, I'm very happy this is happening, and if you see a person who's served this country, thank them. Um, you know, they're giving the ultimate sacrifice so we can sit here today and, and do the things that we do. Uh, sometimes not the greatest things in the world, but um, I just, I'm very appreciative of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other comments from council? Oh, well, I know that um, Herndon makes a point of appreciating our veterans and making sure that, that our, the veterans in our community know that we thank them for their service, and I am pleased that we uh, have this proclamation each year as well. Um, I would like to invite down um, our town manager, Bill Ashton, who did serve in the armed forces as well. Um, I see Harlan Reese, my next door neighbor that I have to see at council meetings more often than at home. Um, and if there's anyone else who is here from um, the American Legion uh, uh, post 184 and anyone in the audience who served in the armed services we would invite you forward and the town council sorry come on down
Well, Madam Mayor and members of the town council, I really hadn't intended to speak, but I do want to, to express my appreciation on behalf of all of the, the veterans uh, from the Vietnam War. In fact, the town does in fact do a really good job of, of remembering our veterans and I thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up, we have a proclamation recognizing Distracted Driving Awareness Month, which is April 2017, and I'll recognize Councilmember Cunningham to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Town of Herner Proclamation recognizing Distracted Driving Awareness Month, April 2017. Distracted driving is any activity that could divert a di driver's attention away from the primary task of driving a vehicle. All distractions endanger driver, passenger, and bystander safety. According to the National Highway Sa Traffic Safety Administration, in 2014, 3,179 lives were lost in distraction-affected crashes, while an estimated 431,000 people were injured in crashes involving distracted drivers. Engaging in visual manual subtasks associated with use of handheld phones and other portable devices increases the risk of getting into a crash by <coughs> three times, while texting and driving increases the risk for a crash by 23 times. Considering the significant risks, the best way to end distracted driving is by educating all Americans about the dangers inherent with these behaviors. Therefore, the mayor and the town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim the month of April 2017 as Distracted Driving Awareness Month in the town of Herndon. Support the Herndon Police Department in raising awareness about distracted driving and encourage education about the significant dangers of distracted driving, improving highway safety for all citizens and visitors to Herndon, Virginia. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Comments from council? Yes, ma'am. This is one of those things where everybody needs to kind of periodically remember um, to pay their full and undivided attention to the task at hand. I know r lately in the police report, we've had some interesting traffic related um, incidents in the town of Herndon, and it's not not a, a week goes by where you notice somebody sitting there at, at, the, at the light like this. You know, they're, they're driving like this, and you're thinking, I think I need to get away from that person. Mm -hmm. So take that moment. You know, we all, we, all take, um, we all lecture our teens and our younger drivers not to text and drive, but then we find ourselves doing the same thing. So this month is a really good month to kind of reset that resolution to, um, to be safe. Don't even text um, while you're at a red light. Just put your phone away. Thank you. Good advice. Uh, other comments? Uh, Vice Mayor. Um, just a reminder, a few of my favorite podcasts are about the brain and how we process information. And no matter how good you are, and believe me, I have my cell phone attached to me. M my day job requires a lot of phone calls and emails and texts. But when I'm driving, I'm focused. Because as much as we think we're really good at it, our brain shifts from one activity to the next. We, we don't do both. We don't multitask. No one does. No matter how good you are, you don't. You simply, your brain shifts from texting to driving or texting or driving. So you really have to pick one. Um, and if you do both, those stats are incredible. And I know our police would, would back that as well because there's just, and you know, you, then you have an accident and you can't go backwards. You can't go, I wish I paid more attention. I wish I did that. So, so important to focus. And I'm, again, I'm glad we recognize this as well and a good reminder for all of us. Thank you. Other comments from council? Mr. McKenna. As a person with two cell phones, um, <laughs> Uh, I actually was guilty of this for quite some time, to be honest, and then um, I just decided one day, because I had a friend who got into an accident with this, just take my phones when I get in the car and literally throw them on the floor in the passenger seat and uh, in the, on the floor so I can't reach them. Um, so no matter how much my ADHD gets to me, uh, I, can, I don't get it. So um, any way you can take yourself to make yourself focus on the road is very important because, you know, we, uh, as far as uh, drunk driving, uh, they've said now uh, texting is very similar to a person who is basically drunk in regards to being behind the wheel because they can swerve in and out of lanes and things of that nature. So um, I think it's a, a great thing, and uh, we just have to be a lot more cognizant of these things. And as my dad used to say, he was in sales. You used to have a quarter, a pen, and a paper, and that, and we were fine. I don't know why. You have to have the phone on all the time when you're talking to somebody. So. Uh, just slow down and realize that there's a world ahead of you. That's it. Thank you. I wish I'd known your dad. <laughs> Other uh, comments from council? Yes. No? Uh, well, I have the two biggest incentives in my world to uh, not be distracted while I'm driving, and those are my two children who are in the back seat sometimes being the distraction, but um, I know they're watching everything that I do, and sooner than I'd like to think, my 12-year-old will be getting a learner's permit, and I want to be able to say to him, 
Uh, I want him to have watched me pay attention so that I can make sure that he pays attention, try to set a good example. So I appreciate all the comments. It is really scary driving around and looking around and seeing all the things that are not driving that are going on behind the wheel. So I appreciate that we call attention to this each year as well. Um, I would like to um, invite down um, the entire council, town manager, town attorney. Um, I see several of our police officers here. I'd like to invite you guys down. And I know, um, I think uh, Sergeant Galpin has a few words for us. I'm sure you will. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, Madam Mayor, Town Council, Town Managers, thank you very much uh, for having us tonight. Um, I think you guys uh, summed a lot of it up, but uh, obviously, you know, distracted driving continues to be a nationwide problem, as well as uh, one of the primary factors involved in the majority of our traffic collisions in our area. Uh, texting, talking on the phone, trying to multitask while we're driving are examples of uh, obviously distracted driving, and studies have shown that 28% of vehicle crashes are related to texting, <coughs> cell phone use alone, and this number is uh, something we, we would like to decrease uh, with our efforts. Um, so this, uh, during April next this month, uh, the goal of this campaign is to uh, increase safety awareness uh, on distracted driving through education, proactive enforcement, and uh, in doing this, we hope to reduce the number of, avoid of avoidable accidents, accidents with injuries, and even fatalities. Uh, so I hope everybody here uh, will help us uh, during this month and our next month, excuse me, in the surrounding jurisdictions uh, by working together and trying to keep our roadways safe. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'll add additionally that. Uh, obviously cell phones and uh, you know other digital devices become so uh, popular with uh, kids adults uh, through work our personal lives and everything so uh, you know during this time it's just time to educate ourselves and remind ourselves and friends uh, during this time to um, you know just kind of be distracted and just focus on the roadway uh, and I think it keeps everybody safe so again thank you very much thank you sir uh, that brings us to our comments portion. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, do you have any comments for us this evening? Nothing this evening, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs? Nothing. Yeah. Mr. Davidson? Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, over the last two weeks, a number of us on the dais here have attended um, a, a couple of events I wanted to tell you about. The first was the Northern Virginia Valor Awards. I was very happy, pleased, and proud to see five of our Herndon Police Department honored at those awards. Also, the next night was the Herndon Police Department annual awards dinner. Um, that was a fantastic event. The keynote speaker, if I can paraphrase his main theme, talked about how the veterans returning from Vietnam, as we're um, issuing a proclamation tonight, weren't treated as well as they might have been. And to some extent, that's true today with the police departments across the United States. And he actually asked us to take the opportunity to thank the local police forces for what they do every day and protecting us and serving us, keeping us safe. Um, there will be an opportunity to do just that. The Herndon Police Department currently has a pilot program for its body-worn cameras. Uh, the next step in the evaluation process is to solicit the public's input and comment before the full deployment of the program in April. Chief Maggie DeBorg will be hosting a public forum specifically addressing the deployment of body-worn cameras on March 30th, 2017 at 7 p.m. at the Herndon Police Station. Citizens and the media 
are invited to attend this forum. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. McKenna. Nothing this week, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody, um, with Councilmember Olam gone, next week is actually one of her favorite weeks. It's the spring big mm -hmm. trash pickup. So this is your opportunity as a town of res a town of Hunter resident to empty out your storage shed, your garage, your closets. Um, there's a long list of things that we will accept, totally free of charge. Bring them down to your curb on your normal trash day, and. Um, uh, don't put out any toxic materials and, and do take pr proper safety precautions to keep our, our, uh, our crews protected. But it's a really nice event, so just spring clean up, get all your stuff out. Um, and I know that um, that's a, a great opportunity to kind of get going on the yard. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Sure. So I just want to, if anyone looked at either the mayor's Facebook page or our HPD page today, um, you might have seen something about a lost dog. So that, unfortunately, the dog is still lost. Um, I just want to give you more context. So that's my friend Mimi. She's only lived in town for four or five months. Herndon has welcomed her. This is her community now, but um, she is quite devastated. Uh, she got in a car accident. Um, a landscaping truck hit her on Eldon Street near the Wells Fargo by the Safeway. Unfortunately, when she opened her door, her dog, who was very skittish, um, ran off. And um, I do want to especially acknowledge, though, the police who handled it so well, because my friend was quite distraught, not only from the accident, but, of course, from losing her dog. Um, and I know everyone, including the chief, has been looking for Bella today. So thank you to everyone who has, has looked for her and continue to look for her. I will certainly update or the mayor's page, and we will update when we find her, which I know we will. But I just want to um, acknowledge that and say thank you for that. Thank you. Um, well, Councilmember Cunningham took my spring cleanup comments, so um, <laughs> so um, you lucked out. I don't have any comments this evening. Uh, this is the portion of the agenda um, where we uh, call on comments from the audience. Um, anyone can come forward and speak for up to three minutes on any item that is not listed as a public hearing item. When um, you see the, the red light come on, please try to wrap up. Is there anyone that would like to come forward? Yes, sir, Mr. Hadlock. <laughs> Nice to see you. Jay Hadlock, 515 Alabama Drive, Herndon. Uh, Madam Mayor and members of the council, I just want to echo the thanks from Harlan Reese and in absentee uh, council, former council member Kirby for the Vietnam Veterans Proclamation. This marks a big year for me, and it will be my 50th anniversary for departing for my one-year tour in the Republic of Vietnam. And I'm glad uh, my wife, Carol, is here with me, came down with me also. One of the great things for any veteran is family support. And she was a great support for me while I was gone and has been a great supporter ever since. If any of you are, maybe some of you are not aware, but there's going to be a major Ken Burns production on the Vietnam War come this September. So uh, if you want to, maybe a lot of you aren't, I hate to say this, old enough to remember, but <laughs> do you get a good idea? Probably he always does very fantastic presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you for your service. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not listed as a public hearing item? Yes, sir. Madam Mayor, members of town council, members of town staff, fellow citizens, fellow historians. Charlie Waddell, 929 Barton Oaks Place. I come before you again to remind you um, about the Carroll Cabin. I've taken a, a tour of the park again and just want to again remind you that we need to save from destruction this Herndon landmark and also to recognize uh, its potential, this icon, this potential as a Herndon icon and a potential tourist attraction. Um, the destruction of this cabin would be a tragedy and a mistake. It's part of our cultural heritage. It represents an early part of our history. The destruction of this unique structure would also set a dangerous precedent for if the town fails to preserve one of our more iconic historic structures, how can we mandate that citizens do the same? The citizens who would come before the ARB or the HPRB wanting to alter or change their property could cite if we destroyed ours that their structure 
is less contributing and we destroyed a more contributing structure. Their rebuttal would trump anything that the HPRB or ARB would say. The estimated cost I have is for the stabilization of the structure is about $73,000, and I think I've seen in the town CIP about $92,000 earmarked. Thank you. Earmarked. And also, is anyone on staff research pursuing grant funding or possible donations? Um, in essence, I'm asking save, what I'm going to say, save the old stone house. I'm not suggesting now that we do a full restoration, just a stabilization, because we just need to do merely ex external repairs, exterior repairs to, to make it safe and to restore it to what it used to look like. And for the immediate foreseeable future, the house can stand as a reminder of what Herndon life was in early 20th century. It doesn't have to have an active use at this time. Again, the house can stand as a reminder. Notice the gas house across the street, no active use. There are well houses on the golf course that have no active use um, that have been preserved. And also, one could say that the caboose has very limited access, uh, active use, except the days that we open it and I staff that. Um, have any of y'all ever discarded a family heirloom or treasure that you thought, mm, doesn't have any use, I don't need this, and then at some point in time, I wish I would not gotten rid of that, or a family member ask. This is, in essence, the same thing. You all are stewards of our history, our way of life. You're also trustees and protectors of our heritage. You have a unique opportunity to preserve and protect a key part of our heritage that is now being threatened with destruction. You have a duty to Herndon's future as well as a past, our past. Please save the old stone house. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not a public hearing item? Ms. Glakas. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Mayor. I'm Barbara Glakas, 935 Barton Oaks Place. I'm here again to advocate that the Stone Carroll Cabin in Running Me Park be preserved and not demolished. My presentation tonight is about our town's custom of saving historic structures. Uh, you all know this structure, the Yellow House. It was going to be raised in the 1990s, but the town collaborated with other entities to move it and to save it. It is now a private residence, and the Heritage Preservation District boundaries were extended to accommodate this structure. I've heard some say the Carroll Cabin is too small to be useful, but I believe small is in the eyes of the beholder. This very little old building on uh, Eldon Street used to be the Detweiler dentist office. Although small, the person who lives there now obviously enjoys the heck out of it. I love the lawn furniture on the side patio. Although those two buildings I just showed you are now used, no one is asking you at this point for the Carroll Cabin to be rehabbed to the extent that it be made habitable again. A structure does not have to be habitable for it to be useful or for it to have historic, cultural, architectural, and educational value to the town. For instance, we have these spring houses on Herndon's golf course. This one has been rehabilitated. There was much collaboration to help preserve this building. This other spring house has been partially rehabbed, although the old home that it once belonged to was long gone. The spring house was preserved because it was understood that this uninhabited structure represents a snapshot in Herndon's history, history before we had town water system and when residents had cisterns and their own wells and they derived their water from the spring along Folly Lick Branch. We have the stone railroad bridge over Sugarland Run that re represents our rail history. We have old barns throughout Herndon. Some are used and some are unused. They remind us of our dairy history. We have the old Moffat blacksmith shop near Lid Street that was built about nine years after the Carroll Cabin. The blacksmith shop is no longer there, but you can still see the remaining foundation next to the old gas house. However, Herndon did not tear this blacksmith shop down. No, it was taken apart board by board and moved over to Frying Pan Park, where it remains in all of its historic glory today. This structure teaches us about the days in our town before we had automobiles, when the town blacksmith would make our door and window hardware, our kitchen utilities, utensils, our wagon wheels, and our horseshoes. This gas generator house, oh, there's the 
There's the blacksmith shop right there. This gas generator house was the only remaining structure on the block between Lynn Street and Station Street that survived the town's 1917 fire. You can see it here on the left-hand side of this post-fire picture, but the fact that it survived the fire is not its only claim to fame. This structure and the display inside teaches us about the days before Herndon had electricity in the early 1900s when the Herndon Gas Company was first founded. It provided gas in downtown Herndon. The town council used to task a man to walk around downtown town to light the old, the old uh, gas street lamps each evening. In conclusion, all these structures may not be inhabited, but they are useful, important to our town history, just like the Carroll Cabin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not a public hearing item? Okay, thank you very much. That does bring us to our first public hearing, which is Ordinance 17004 to consider proffer condition amendment PCA 17101 Reston Herndon Business Park. And um, I see Mr. Osell is ready to let us know all about what we're going to try to do over here. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Thank you. and members of the Town Council. Um, this is a, a proffer amendment for the Reston Herndon uh, Business Park. Let me let's see here. Oh, I don't see the, see the PowerPoint there, but I just had a slide there, oh. the, the same slide of the location uh, last week, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Right off of Spring Street, all of the front buildings, address off of Spring. Most of the property is address, addressed off of Victory <coughs> Drive. The particular property was rezoned in 1979 from Industrial General to uh, Plan Development Industrial Park with the current proffers, which you have as part of the uh, package we provided to you. Back in the mid-2000s, on the town's own motion, all the land that was zoned um, PDIP, the Plan Development Industrial Park, was rezoned to Plan Development Business, uh, which was a more newer, more accurate description uh, of the uses being, being conducted on the property. But still, even though the uh, property was rezoned, the uses that were associated with that 1979 rezoning were still effective on the property. So this application by the app applicant, the property owner, will allow the, uh, the certain uses in the PDB zoning district to be, uh, to be used on the property. And as I said last week in the work session, I think in the staff report, while the, the property owner is really focusing on that building that's fronting on Spring Street, there's 10 units in there uh, that uh, he has talked about uh, refacing the front elevation of the building, putting new signage up, doing new landscaping, making the building and the parking area more ADA compliant. And that's where the emphasis of the application is. <coughs> Although, again, like I said in the work session, any of these uses could be conducted anywhere on the property. Um, the main, uh, I guess, the concern issue would be parking. And that's something we would take a look on a case-by-case -case basis if a use uh, proposed to go in the property and it was a higher intensity use, something that required more parking than the current use, we would ask the applicant to do a parking study for us to make sure there was sufficient parking <coughs> for the current uses as well as the new use so it's not over, um, not, so it's not under parked and creating a uh, parking problem on the property. The, as I mentioned in the staff report again, the Planning <coughs> Commission during their public hearing recommended approval of the proffer amendment and I believe at the work session last week the council members did not raise any uh, concerns issues over this and therefore the staff was recommending approval okay thank you are there any questions for staff on this item yep. okay thank you sir um, this um, is a public hearing so I'd like to invite down the applicant or applicants agent um, to address the council and let us know uh, what we need to know from your perspective. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. My name is Lori Greenleaf with the firm of McGuire Woods and we're in Tysons, Virginia. We're here tonight representing Kenwood Management Company and F well, <clears throat> excuse me, Phil Ackley from Kenwood is here with me tonight. We are very excited to bring this uh, PCA application before you tonight because it does represent the opportunity to upgrade a, a very important property in the town. The rest in Herndon Business Park um, has been uh, serving this community for decades with uses such as small office space, warehouse, warehouse flex, 
um, there have been and still is print shops in there, ballet and martial arts establishments, Rest and Shirt is located there, GSA has some space, uh, Audi Volkswagen, CrossFit, Herndon Rest and Fish, uh, the Wolf Trap Foundation, and some very popular little eateries um, over the years, which you may have visited on the property. Kenwood Management has owned the property for a little over 18 years, and they're very proud of their fairly consistent 95% occupancy rate. But at this point, Phil and his colleagues um, would like to upgrade the business park, and um, from a physical standpoint, that means some modernization, um, as staff has mentioned, of the frontage along Spring Street. That's sort of where the focus will be to kind of bring it out of the 1980s um, and into the uh, 2017 <laughs> time frame. The zoning portion of this request, though, um, is to add some uses which would ordinarily be allowed in the PDB district, uh, except for the 1979 zoning case, which is the rezone the property to the PDIP, and basically, pretty much froze in time, a list of uses for the property. Um, as staff has explained, um, the ordinance was changed in the 2000s, and while the PDB zoning designation was placed on this property, the list of uses um, allowed in the PDB was not, because at that time there was no zoning action that came before the council. Um, I, Phil or I are happy to answer any questions about potential uses, but uh, in conclusion, um, this is an opportunity to preserve and enhance land that is zoned uh, PDB in the town, and there isn't a whole lot of land zoned PDB, to continue important warehouse and warehouse flex uses on the property, but also to allow uh, modernization so that the park can attract new uses to the site and to the town to better serve the citizens. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? No. Thanks. The only question we have is, is the Wiener Circle coming back? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I, I have heard that they are retiring. Oh, yeah, no, I'm teasing. No, I appreciate you, you coming before us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there are no questions from Steph? Okay. Uh, Mr. Rossell, did you have anything to add after that? No, I did not. Okay, thank you. Well, this is a public hearing, so I will call for comments from the audience. Um, once again, you have up to three minutes. State your name and address for the record. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on this item? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I thought that staff gave a great report last week and um, I, I look forward to the modernization, so I, I am all in favor of this. Okay, so is that a motion to approve? Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve made by Councilmember Friedrichs, seconded by the Vice Mayor. Discussion on the motion? Nope. Anyone? <laughs> I already discussed it. No. Um, anyone? Uh, no, well, um, I agree. I, I'm excited about the possible um, improvements here. Did I call on you, Jen? Did I, did I skip you? Oh, Sorry. Um, we're excited about the, the improvements that, that are on the way. It's a, a vibrant center now, and I think it will continue to be. So we're looking forward to, to moving forward with this. So uh, I will call the question on the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. And that motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, next up is Ordinance 17005 to approve an easement to, uh, to Coxcom LLC for underground communication lines in 797 Station Street parking lot adjacent to the James Building. And Mr. Boxer is here for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. This is an uh, uh, ordinance that would allow the uh, Coxcom uh, to uh, install underground conduit to serve the buildings adjacent to the James parking lot in town. James Building parking lot. Um, currently, they've uh, curtailed the installation at, at the property line uh, underneath uh, Lynn Street and look forward with this uh, approval to continue and provide service. I, I noticed that Catherine Faulkner from Cox is here. Uh, should you have any questions, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you have any comments for us or? Thank you for being here. We appreciate sure. it. Catherine Falk, I'm the Vice President and Market Leader for Cox Communications in Northern Virginia. Just wanted to thank Ms. Yates for her help with this and the, the town staff. And just tell you that this actually came out of a meeting we had last year with Art, uh, the town manager, who um, called us over to say, isn't there a way you could extend service into downtown? And it was just a little more challenging than we expected. And we ended up having to go across the W&O&D trail, 
which is expensive and time consuming, <laughs> but we're very glad to now be at the point where we can bring service to downtown. We do have customers who have asked us for service, and so we're excited about the opportunity. And again, thank you to the staff for their support on this. We're excited too. I've heard from them, so they'll, they'll be thrilled that this this is likely to to go through this evening. Are there um, any questions for um, the applicant or for staff? Anyone? Nope. Well, thank you for going through the pain for us. We appreciate no, it. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, this is a public hearing, um, and is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on this item? Nope. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and uh, move to council level for discussion and action. I'll make the motion to uh, for ordinance 17-0-05. Second. Okay, we have a motion to approve made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Ms. Baker. Discussion on the motion? Pretty straightforward. All right, pretty straightforward. Um, this does require a roll call vote, so I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor Merkel. Vice Mayor Baker? Yes. Councilmember Cunningham? Yes. Councilmember Davidson? Yes. Councilmember Friedrichs? Yes. Councilmember McKenna? Aye. Mayor Merkel? Yes. Uh, that motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. There's Sorry. always one. <laughs> Uh, next up is Ordinance 17006 to approve the abandonment of Reliance Global Com Services, Inc. without removal of the 7,070 feet of conduit, resulting in town ownership and control of this conduit. Mr. Boxer. Thank you, Madam Mayor and, and members of council. Back in uh, 2007, uh, a franchise agreement was provided to YTV uh, that expires this March, or actually uh, March 16th of, of uh, earlier this month. Um, the parent company, Reliance Global, uh, Globecom, is uh, requesting that we abandon in place the, the conduit, 7,000 square feet, and uh, it would become our property, and with that, we uh, would recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Questions for Mr. Boxer? Okay. Thank you, sir. Once again, this is um, a public hearing, so I'll move to uh, or see if there are comments from the audience. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing, move to council level for discussion and action. Ms. Baker. I move that we, uh, I move ordinance 170-06. I'll second that. Okay, discussion on the motion. Nope. Nope, it's pretty straightforward once again. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, thank you. Well, then um, I will call the question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Um, we have one general item this evening, which is Resolution 17G38, to authorize the submission of a local government challenge grant application, Virginia Commission for the Arts. Um, I will call for a couple of disclosures by council on this item. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you, Madam Mayor. For the record, I'm an unpaid commissioner for the Virginia Commission for the Arts, which provides grant monies to Virginia localities under the Local Challenge Grants Program for redistribution to nonprofit organizations for art activities. Even though the item may not have application solely to my position on the Virginia Commission for the Arts, I am nonetheless disqualifying myself from any discussion and action on this item, and I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and town attorney. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Friedrichs. Madam Mayor, for the record, I am a paid employee of Arts Herndon, which may receive grant monies from the town under the Local Challenge Grants Program for redistribution to nonprofit organizations for arts activities. This item has application solely to a business in which I have a personal interest. Therefore, I disqualify myself from any discussion and action on this item. I have filed the appropriate disclosure with the town clerk and the town attorney. Uh, thank you, Ms. Friedrichs. And Cindy Roeder. Uh, this item would have gone on consent had we not had the disclosure, so <laughs> I don't think you have to convince us too hard. <laughs> Just give them like a second to walk to the back right, right. room and we'll be done, right? <laughs> um, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council, for the opportunity to just come forward. And this resolution requests your authorization to submit to the state uh, commission for the arts a local government challenge grant in the amount of uh, $5,000. The, the one stipulation that we always want to make sure we follow is, is the requirement to award equal amount of money to arts organizations in the community through our fiscal 18 budget process. So um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Um, any questions for Ms. Ritter? 
Uh, my only question is the five thousand dollars that the town needs to apply or to give to an arts organization. Does it have to be the same arts organization? No, it does not. Okay, I thought I thought that was the case. Thank you very much. Good, thank you. Um, there are no other questions. I will um, ask for a motion. I'll make a motion on resolution seventeen G thirty eight. Second. Okay, motion to approve made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Miss Baker. Discussion on the motion. There's not many of us up here, but we'll make, we'll make it work, right? <laughs> By the skin of our teeth, we're going to be able to do this. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Um, we like free money, so we'll, we're, we're all about it. So um, I'll call the question on the motion. Those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Phew. We had a quorum. All right. Thank you. Um, and I'll give our uh, other council members a second to get up here. There is um, one item on our, or actually two items on our consent agenda. So is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. I'll second. Okay, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, how many of us are there now? Six, okay. And that motion carries. That concludes our agenda this evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? Madam Mayor, seeing no further business, I move we adjourn. And I'll, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, they're so nice. Who's taking <laughs> I'll give it to Sydney. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. And we stand adjourned at 7.52 p.m. Excellent.